It's Feedback Gaming. Welcome back to the Kingdom of Romania. We've taken out Hungary. We puppeted Bulgaria. We have puppeted Slovakia. I don't have any extra divisions to give me. And our next objective is to take out Yugoslavia by focus. Divide Yugoslavia. Then we're going to go for Greece. And hopefully, if world tension isn't high... It's low enough, should I say. Uh, we'll go for Turkey. My plan now is to try and make as many of these divisions as possible. The big 40 with artillery divisions. The downside to them is they need 150 pieces of artillery, so that's pretty heavy. We're not doing too bad right now. We can make another one, maybe a two, a squeeze. I'm focusing a little bit more heavily on artillery production. Uh, we are going to finish our improved artillery tune as well. And we're also going to focus a little bit more on air as well. Ideally, once we uh, attack the Soviet Union, we need to have at least 24 of these. That way we can attack over a very wide front and dealing horrendous amount of damage against the Soviets. We need 750,000 manpower to do the final focus. This one. So it might be just a good idea just to train a few extra divisions. To make sure our artillery production is as high as it possibly can be, we're going to import a little bit of tungsten. And that way our production efficiency will go up, as well as keeping the production high on the artillery as well. Yugoslavia is defiant. This is perfect. So, the worst scenario here is that Germans agree to your idea, uh, German-Italian idea of splitting it several ways. It creates a bunch of annoying puppets, and we've got enough of the puppets as it is, so it's better just we need to declare war on them, and we just slice them into as many pieces as possible. It's not going to be too difficult, we can just charge blindly into their front line, attack aggressively. Okay, this is pretty easy, we've made a breakthrough directly in the center. We'll just squeeze through the center now, now we've got a breach in the front line. This is the beauty of having so much excess divisions. While we're at war as well, we are gonna justify on Greece. I'm gonna try and walk around their front line so we can encircle them. Perfect. A nice opportunity here, so we'll grab those guys too. Once again, we're not really looking to defeat them really quickly. Ideally, we just prefer to uh, encircle as many as we can and get as much XP. The more XP our divisions are get, the better. Okay, Yugoslavia's gone. We're going to completely annex them. This gives access to a lot of aluminium. Oh, there's nothing to import anyway. Here, and we'll convert all of these to artillery memers. Probably just a few too many divisions here. Uh, but over time, we'll uh, build the strength of, the, of, of them up, exercise them a little bit. We're ahead of schedule at the moment, so we're doing really well. We've got 700,000. But once again, we're going to have to train just a few more troops. Probably another 12. Okay, we could declare war, and we will do immediately. I'm going to assign all of these to my general. It's less efficient if I let the AI do it, but it's not that many, that we haven't got much of an air force to begin with. I realize I've not brought Bulgaria into the war. It's a mistake. Now they'll all attack. Oh, no, they're reluctant to. Never mind. Doesn't matter. They're out of supply anyway. It's good we're pushing into them now. We're only a little bit behind on guns, which is fine. I think it might be a good time now to focus a little bit better on the artillery. Yeah, let's do that. Can we get the new Disperse Industry out? Soon. Good, the guys in the center are broken. And the ones in the north broken too. Lots of encirclements. The guy's got four attack. Four attack, four attack. This is the guy we're going to have to go with because he's got four attack and he's also got infantry expert. So this guy is going to crack with a lot of damage. Go for more air crews as well. Grease is gone. Boom. Uh, the, mm, don't actually mind the Red Army being here, actually. That's fine. So now we can focus on the better planes. And go for the big engine on it as well. We'll just shift around the production of artillery, because right now artillery's not doing too bad. Pop you boys here. And convert them to the bigger division. Right now, we should have more than 750,000. Yes, we do. And we've got a little bit of time to wait for these divisions to build up in strength as well. Perfect. Okay, so we've got the ability now to declare we're on Turkey, so we should take it as soon as we can. So this 14 army in the back 
is the second half of this army. So what I'll do is I'll convert these to the big artillery division. I'll start exercising them now and these guys will be trained for when I attack the Soviet Union. It has finally come to this, but unfortunately the parties must end. This doesn't get rid of King Carol, it just changes King Carol's lifestyle and gets rid of it and it increases democratic support. This can be a possible problem because this is a ticking time bomb, remember, because you need to start to keep not aligned. If you flip to Democrat, you'll get a different leader and you need King Carol for the event to fire. Hey, did you know that I'm currently doing a giveaway on Gleam.io? It is a special giveaway for a copy of Man the Guns. You know what? In fact, let's make it two copies. The link is in the description of this video and it is the pinned comment. Click on that link and enter for a chance of winning a copy of Man the Guns. All right, let's do this. I believe that's one division. We've completely pushed back, but they've still got 12 divisions here. I think be enough to break here. Still got quite a few divisions. We've got the maximum amount of troops in battle where they keep reinforcing. We managed to just fight this handful of troops. We will be able to break them. We have to pray that they don't reinforce. It's taking a lot of strength damage as well. It's pushing into a mountain. And it's also pushing into a lot of... Oh! Hey! Oh my goodness. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Okay, we're going to deploy a lot of troops into this little gap now. Spread you boys out. Everyone's going to be aggressive. And everyone get into the front line. I have a feeling that someone's going to comment this. Uh, yes, I did capture all of Greece. So I could have used these islands as a position to launch an attack into Turkey as well. That's one alternative to try and push through this strait, which that strait is a bit of a nightmare, to be honest with you. Yeah, so I could have potentially have done that, but I forgot. Oops. Okay, grab an anchor. They've left it empty. They would defend it with three divisions, but now we just walk in. Turkey is pretty big, though, and it's got quite a lot of victory points, so we're going to have to push deeper into them. Currently capitulated, but towards 85%, so not a long left. More focused towards trying to get these guys right here. There we go, we've got them. Got them, boys. And there we go. And of course, we're going to take all of Turkey. Okay, local development. We have the option to do war propaganda against Germany, that's good. Because that gives us more defense on core territory. When the Soviets justify on us. So we want them to justify us because they want we want them to attack us because remember that's beneficial to us because that means that we don't lose war support and we don't lose as much stability in a defensive war which is right what we're looking for of course don't forget about grabbing those free divisions from bulgaria and slovakia that'd be stupid to forget about them wouldn't it okay we're also going to build some forts along the border with the soviets as well a single line will be okay might go for two just to keep it cost efficient but for now that'll do Okay, the Soviet Union is currently justifying against us, so we're right on time. I'm going to focus more on the forts that are in Europe, so Northern Transylvania and Bessarabia. The Soviet Union demands Bessarabia. And of course, we're going to say no. No. Okay, that's the Air Force already now. It's nowhere near as big as the Soviet Air Force, but... It's just enough in this area. The AI is not very smart with its AI, so... Oh, as we go. They declare war. They're not very smart with the AI, so more than likely we'll be in a position just to hold. And that's exactly what is happening. Got to keep a very close eye on these forts, though, because these need to be repaired for anything. And they have decided to push into the mountains here as well. That surprised me as well. Now, the only way they'll be able to push this is if they get air support. And hopefully they won't. Air Force is standing by. Oh, these guys don't have an order. There we go. And they are pushing into us. Let them grind against us. Lose an absolute crap ton of equipment. Oh my goodness. They've already lost 73,000 guns. And they'll never be able to break this by the looks of things. Okay, so they do have a big air force. And they are contesting us in the air pretty well. This scares me a little bit. So I think we need to invest and go all ham here. I think we're going to go total mob. Currently got 7%. Yeah, so we can do it. So let's do it. Let's make our planes as best they can be. Maxing out those engines. Giving extra range. Perfect. 
Okay, we need a lot of steel now because we've lost our trading part of the Soviet Union. I think we'd probably be better off getting it from the United States. Let's do that. Okay, I think it is time to go for the uh, the next aircraft just so we get the agility bonus that we need to defeat the Air Force of the Soviets. Right now we do have green air even though they have more planes than us. How are the battles going? We have a slight edge. Not, mu not massive. The Soviet divisions on the front line aren't looking too good right now. That's probably about 15-10% army strength, and they're still attacking. If they're still attacking, I ain't gonna stop, so... <laughs> okay. Maybe this is like AI that represents, like, historical accuracy. Let's counterattack. Let's do it. This is the time, boys. For victory. Boom. Oh, those green bubbles. Stuff. Sign them on to that army. Good. Someone always asks, what's the casualties, Dave? Where are the casualties, Dave? What are the casualties, Dave? Here are the casualties. So, so 1.7 million losses for the Soviets, 29,000. Oh my damn. There's opportunity for encirclement here, and I feel like I should take it too. But all we need is three divisions. One, two, and then maybe a few more divisions just to plug the gap. We can get these boys here. We can create a beautiful encirclement here. There's so many divisions on this front line. More than likely, there'll be high strength divisions too. We managed to break them a wee bit. Oh, are you moving or not? I don't know. I don't think they're going to move. We're actually going to be able to break them out of the way. Oh my god, that is so sick. Got to be careful though, because there's some stra high strength divisions on the other side. I think it might be a good idea to stop now. Okay, let's clean this pocket up and let's close it. These guys have all de so free pickings. Still a lot of divisions, still with a tiny few ticks of organization. And because there's so many divisions in the mountains, they're still holding out by the tiniest amount. I think this might be it though. No, the guys in the south won't break. Oh! Oh! Are they breaking or not? Oh no! They've declared on the Soviets as well! What the hell, AI? 1940 declare on the Soviets? I wonder why they decided to do that. Okay, so we're gonna go full crazy on this strat now and make a big push northwards. Now the front line's broaden out. We're struggling to get air superiority. Uh, because they've got significantly more planes than theirs, and plus they've got the defender's advantage too, due to all the airports. I have a feeling there's probably not a lot of Soviet troops over this front line, so they've just walked into the Soviet Union for free. So our participation is 68%, theirs is 31 I don't like that, that gap's way too big in my opinion. We managed to make a pocket against the, uh, the German line here, but we've nowhere near come close to undercutting them. They've just sprouted out of the north. Okay, we're gonna go for a slightly different order now. We're gonna pop you guys in the center here, our main attack force, and we're gonna make a blitz order directly through the center. All right, let's go. No time to wait. Let's go, go, go. And all green bubbles as well, which is good to see. So this is really crucially important, this. You can't go for King Michael's coup. It's important that you keep it non-aligned. Um, if you do select this, unfortunately, because you've, you've swapped out King Carol for somebody else, Unfortunately, it's not going to be possible. Let's go for the nuclear option. Select our whole artillery army. S to split. Actually, no. We'll just take off. Actually, there's no need because this front line's already covered anyway. So we're going to select the full army. Right click. S to split. Right click. Right click. Right click. The A move. Look at that. How beautiful is that? The claw. Okay, it's kind of worked. We've kind of made a claw pushing through the center of uh, Russia here. We can take Moscow. Um, I don't think it even makes a big difference, the occupation. It kind of feels like it does. Let's have a look. So right now we're about to take Moscow. Our participation is 52%. And if we go back into the same screen, it's still 52%. Yeah, it doesn't make a big impact. <laughs> okay, this is turning out pretty funny. Uh, I, I kind of, You can kind of see what I'm trying to do here, though, can't you? I just need to try and overtake them. So that way I control the front line. That way if I get the most occupations, and I will take in the lion's share of casualties as well. <laughs> it's kind of worked here because we've kind of overcut them with this one line. 
<laughs> okay. Finally time to push muscle in front. No troops on this front, so opportunity to cut them off in the center and grab all this oil, so why not? Soviets now only have 52 to 92 divisions. They don't have enough divisions to hold their front line. Something I've forgotten about, but Republican Spain joined the common term. And the, neither side has been able to break the Pyrenees. A uh, little gains from Germany, but <laughs> nothing's really happened. I think this is as far as we're going to be able to advance. So as you can see, we've made kind of an effort as we push forward and try and dodge the German lines. 99% and 100. Done. So, here we go. This is the tough part. They have 1,600 points. We have 1,000 arrows. So, we do have slightly more. But as you can see here, all these points here are pretty cheap. But these ones are really expensive. The one we need the most is Leningrad. Because that's required for the event. So, to cut out the first, I think it probably might be a better idea to take the most expensive ones. And we can only take one. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Alright. Well, in that case, I guess we just... Work around with what we've got then, right? This might look a little bit random, but I am aiming for the tiles which we've got a discount on because we occupy them ourselves. Oh, look, has Jim taken anything? Oh, they're taking land in the center. What? Okay, let's just get Stalingrad. That's what we need for the event anyway. The only bit left now is Republican Spain. Uh, let's pop it. No, let's not. Let's not. So tempting. No, behave. All right, and this is it. Oh my goodness. Are you guys triggered? You should be. <laughs> what is this? What is this? Okay, we're on the land that we need now. Now we need to wait. And this is it. This is the secret event. Ah! A homage to love, an exceptionally inbreted and emotional King Carol II hijacked today's strategy meeting, pulling everyone's attention to the brilliant idea he came up with with the previous night. Truly a romantic at heart, the king declared with tears in his eyes that he wished for a woman in his life to know the intense and true love he feels for them. Addressing the chief of staff and the cabinet of cabinet with a lengthy, abrupt, rather slurred monologue, and appealed to their most delicate and heartfelt sympathies only to finish by summonly calling for remaining remaining of the two enemies' great cities as a tribute to the, the greatest and deepest feelings known to man. Love. The king has clearly become entirely fixated upon the idea in his mind, and he is highly unlikely to budge easily uh, should we wish to dissuade him. Wow. Truly a genius descended from the heavens. We're going to rename Stalingrad to Magdagrad, and, and Leningrad is going to be renamed to Zizigrad. <laughs> Here we go, boys. That's the secret event. So you're probably thinking, Dave, what the hell? That's not what I was expecting. Um, yeah, I guess it's just the it's a similar event for the Greater German Reich. Um, they get the event to rename them as well. Uh, but uh, King Carl gets uh, <laughs> these names. What are the historical significance of these names? What do they actually mean? I don't know. Tell me, guys, in the comments below. I have no idea. If you are Romanian, let me know what these names actually translate to, what they mean, or what they represent, because I am not the foggiest. Guys, if you enjoyed this series, don't forget to like and to subscribe. Don't forget when you subscribe, don't forget to hit the bell icon, because otherwise your subscription means nothing. If you do enjoy this series, don't forget to share it on Reddit, Facebook, Twitter. If you want to support my content in future, you can also become a $5 Patreon. The link is in the description. I hope you have an awesome day, and I will see you guys next time. See you soon, boys. Bye-bye.